Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In today's video, we're taking a look at the topic called Azure Active Directory. This is actually a very popular topic which gets covered in many courses, including another course I'm currently busy with on this channel being the Azure Fundamentals course, which is also known as AZ900. All right, enough of that. Let's get to the topics. In this video, we'll more specifically first be discussing what exactly is Azure Active Directory, and then we'll be taking a look at how you can actually go about accessing this great platform. And then lastly, we'll be discussing some of the benefits you get by using this platform. Like usual guys, now that we have all of this out of the way, let's get to the first topic on this list, which is what is Azure Active Directory? Well, the first thing you need to know is it's a cloud platform, which obviously means it's in the cloud. Now, for those of you that don't know what the cloud is, let me give you a very short explanation. It's basically when you go put something in someone else's property and they host it for you and render it back to you for a subscription fee, usually a monthly fee in most cases. For example, if I have data on my device, it's just data. If I have data on my server or my company's server, it's still just data. If I have a program or some software on my device, it's just software. If I have software of some kind on my company's server and I access that via something like a network, that's still just software. It might be a few other things like remote desktop or remote app, but it's still just software because essentially it's still on your property or your company's property. Now, if we take that very same data or software, which would normally be on your property or your company's property, and if you put that somewhere like on Microsoft servers and you have them store your stuff for you and mostly manage your stuff for you, what do you call that? That's cloud, folks. That's someone else, which in this case is Microsoft, could be anywhere. They could be right next door, they could be across the street, or they could be in another side of the world. But the fact that your stuff is on their property and the fact that they are hosting it, storing it, and running it for you and asking you a monthly subscription fee for that service, well, that's basically cloud in a nutshell, guys. Now back to our main topic on this list, which is Azure Active Directory. It's an example of cloud. Remember that. The second thing you need to know about Azure Active Directory is it's a pretty good example of Platform as a Service, P-A-A-S, which basically stands for Platform as a Service. Now, in case you don't know what that is, it's basically a specific type of cloud. You generally get about three main types of public cloud. And yes, you get public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud, not something we're going to be discussing in today's lesson. But with regards to public cloud, there's three main types. And those three types is software as a service, infrastructure as a service, and platform as a service, which is the one Azure Active Directory is. So this platform as a service is basically when Microsoft or the cloud provider takes care of almost all the heavy lifting for you. They basically go ahead and do almost all the work for you. And you literally just kind of swoop in at the last moment and just reap the benefits. The amount of work you're going to be doing essentially is almost nothing. And I can give you a lot of weird random examples, and I've done that in some of my other lessons and some of my other courses, one of which is the Azure Fundamentals course. So in that course, if you, go, if you were to go have a look at some of those videos, I think it's the second or the third video in that course, I very you know, properly explain what is software, infrastructure, and platforms as a service. So if you're curious about those topics, go have a look at video two or three in the Azure Fundamentals course. Now, platform as a service, what is that? Well, you can imagine yourself walking into a grocery store, and in some grocery stores, depending on what country you're in and all that, if you get those sections where you can go buy frozen veggies in a bag. You know, they normally come in like some sort of bag or something. And it's normally pre-mixed and pre-sliced and pre-diced and pre-peeled and whatever. You just go and buy that. You take it home and maybe at most you go and throw it in a pot of water and you just kind of cook it. So you are going to do some work there, but the work that you're going to be doing in the end of the day is minimal. The, so in that case, your supermarket, whoever made that bag of veggies, they did almost all the work for you. And that, believe it or not, is actually an example of platform as a service. So another example is if you go to some superstores or supermarkets, you'll find some of them you are lucky enough to maybe get one of those bowls where a meal has been pre-made. You know, it could be something like a lasagna. It normally comes like in a, 
in a container that's, that's made out of tin foil or something that you can kind of dispose of afterwards. So it's like a lasagna. All you're going to do is maybe just pop it in, in the micro microwave, pop it in the oven, and after 10 or 20 minutes, it's ready. The amount of work you did is almost nothing. You basically just heated it up at the end of the day. You didn't actually make it. So I suppose you can go and tell your friends and your family you made it because they will never know, essentially. Uh, but it's an example of platform as a service. You swooped in at the last moment and you basically took all the credit for it. As if you did all the work, but meanwhile you did none. That is platform as a service. Now this is where Active Directory is an example of that. Microsoft takes care of all the heavy lifting for you and you're just, you're just gonna do minimal work. And then lastly, you don't need to manage it. Now that's obviously because this is in the cloud and more specifically, like we just said, because it's platform as a service. Now by now, guys, you're probably getting very curious as to how you're going to access this Azure Active Directory. Well, hold on kids, because that is our next topic, which is how do I access the Azure Active Directory? Now with regards to accessing the Azure Active Directory, this can be achieved via two ways. You can either go to the Azure portal, which is the one I'm going to go and do. And you'll see there's the address for you guys, but you can actually honestly just find this in a quick Google search result if you really want to. The second method is via the Office 365 Admin Center. Now, if you're going to log into the 365 portal, it's going to first of all just take you to the normal portal. Once you get there, depending on your subscription, your privilege, you would potentially see a little gray tile at the bottom left that says Admin. You click on that. And that will essentially take you to the main 365 Admin Center. Once you get there, at the bottom left, you just expand your options in the navigation pane and you'll see one of your options there is the Azure Active Directory. Now with that out of the way, let me go to the Azure portal. I'm going to log on to my Azure portal. And here we are, folks, on my Azure portal. I've actually got like a gazillion, well not literally, but I've got so many. I mean, you'll see of the email address, it says Burning Ice Tech 11. I mean, I've got a one, a two, a three, and all the way to 11 and many other ones. Uh, but that's just because of the vast, you know, amount of courses I actually train. It's just insane for me to keep track of all the accounts I have at the end of the day of all the amount of courses I train. Anyway, so this is the Azure portal. I'm currently on what we refer to as the dashboard. Now, if you'd like to know more about the Azure portal, you know, feel free to go have a look at my Azure Fundamentals course, which is also on this channel. It's um, labeled as AZ900. I'm going to go and click here on the left on that little button there. That is basically our navigation pin panel. Um, it says show portal menu. And then in this menu there, one of the options we'll have is Azure Active Directory. These are some of the services you've got available on the Azure portal. It's absolutely not the only service you've got available on the Azure portal. These are just some of the most common services that people would like uh, on, the, on the Azure portal. So if you would like to have more, you're going to have to run a search for it at the top. You could potentially go here to create a resource, which is basically in the marketplace. We can go here to all services and there's just so, so many, many of the day. You can go and attend as many courses as you like and you'll never know everything about Azure. It's just too vast. I mean, you guys probably know by now, IT in general is just too fast. So let's go ahead and click here on Azure Active Directory. And there we are, folks. So if you were to go via the 365 portal, which was the other method, and if you clicked on Azure Active Directory there, it'll basically take you to the exact same thing we see now. The only real difference you'll notice is the URL at the top is going to say aad.portal, um, which basically just stands for Azure Active Directory. You know, so that's the only difference is the URL is slightly different because you're accessing it via another portal. But other than that, you can do the exact same thing. So it's also an Active Directory like the one you've seen so far in this course, if you've been following the series, except I did not have to go and build myself a physical server or a virtual server. I did not have to go and install the server you know, operating system. I didn't have to go and install the ADDS role. I don't have to go and do anything because this is what? Platform as a service, which means I just come in the last moment and reap the benefits like that veggie example I give, gave you guys. So you can see here there I can go to my user accounts. There's my groups. So I'm going to go here to users. At the moment, I only have the one. It's kind of like when you just made your active directory on premises. You only have like a few accounts, mainly just the one main administrator account until you go and make more. Same applies in the cloud, guys. So I can go in here and invite a new guest user, which is normally a live ID or a 365 email address. 
or I can go to new user, same as on premises. Go to new user. You can go and specify the person's name, domain. So this is what the person's gonna be logging on with. Name, first name. So I can actually just go and do a quick one just to show you guys. Let's go make John. John, 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 John Smith. There we go. You can go and choose to generate an auto pass it, which is normally four letters, four um, numbers, or four uh, digits. Or you can choose one. Honestly, I would say just let it generate because it doesn't matter either way that's a temporary password. So what's the point of choosing one if it's just going to change it the first time the person logs on anyway? Um, if this person needs to be in, in, in any groups, you can add them while creating the account. Or just like on premises, you can always do it afterwards. If this person needs to have any special permissions or privilege, you can assign them at this point in time. You know, This is basically admin roles and things like that. By default, the person is just a user. So if I were to go and click on that, this person can be a full out administrator or a limited administrator. I mean, for example, there you have global administrator. That's the one that's pretty much got the highest privilege. Or you can just go and give this person some sort of, or more than one limited administrator account. So for now, let's just close that. That's where you would go and do that. You can go and fill in some basic information if you need to. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on create. Takes about a second and it's done, folks. So I'm going to go and scroll back. This is one cheat way to go and do it. You can scroll back to that menu. These menus are actually called blades, you know, on the Azure side of things. Not something you probably need to know because this course is more about um, on-premises server than, than the cloud environment. But since it's a topic, you know, I'm mentioning it. Groups, you can go to groups here. And then just like on-premises, you can also go and create yourself a little group here if need be. Go type in the name of your group. Let's just call this sales for argument's sake. Sales department. I don't know. Sales department. There we go. That should be enough. Create. Takes about a second. And there you go. You've got the sales department. So one of the things we're going to be doing in our next video, in case you guys are curious, is in our next video, we're going to be also diving into the Zero Active Directory. And one of the things we're going to be doing, which is one of the main things that video is going to be about, is synchronization between your on-premises Active Directory and your cloud Active Directory. So you are gonna have an Active Directory on premises and at the same time, which is in the cloud. So I'm gonna go here to my Azure Active Directory again, users, here we go. So all the objects you've got on your on-premises Active Directory, remember objects is pretty much everything, your users, your groups, your computers, pretty much anything and everything, you know, so uh, your containers, your OUs, Everything on premises is an object, you know, in your Active Directory. So all of that's going to synchronize to your Active Directory in your cloud, and everything in the cloud is going to synchronize back down to your on-premise Active Directory. They're going to basically be clones of one another. So that is something we're going to be taking a look at in episode 13. So if you're curious about that, stay tuned. Keep an eye out for episode 13, which will probably be out within the next day or two. Normally I release these episodes every one to three. Yeah, it's about one to three days. So sometimes it's one day, sometimes it's two days, three days. So on average, it's about between one to three days for a new episode. So stay tuned for that one. All right, guys. And then our last topic for today is what are the Azure Active Directory benefits? Basically, in a nutshell, why should you want to go and use Azure Active Directory? So with the benefits of Azure Active Directory, well, what are they? Well, the first one is high availability, which means the service is never going to be unavailable. At least that's the general idea here. Uh, traditionally, you would only have your on-premises Active Directory server, and it was completely up to you, and it was completely your responsibility to make sure it was highly available. Um, it wasn't impossible, but it was very expensive, and it was a lot of work. Um, at the very least, you would need to have two or more of everything, a backup of everything a backup server, a backup internet connection, a backup everything for that matter. So to basically make sure that if one component goes offline, whether it be something as simple as a network card or something as big as a server, the backup of whatever that component is would kick in, making sure you've got availability. So whatever service that component is delivering, which in this case is your Active Directory, that service should not be unavailable. So if your Active Directory server goes offline, the service being your Active Directory should not be unavailable. Now, if you have Active Directory in the cloud and at the same time have it on premises, you will have high availability as well. That's called hybrid. 
Now, if you have Active Directory only in the cloud, you also have high availability because guess what? It is not your problem. It's Microsoft's problem. They give you a 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee. I mean, they're one of the biggest associations or companies we know. So they've got such a huge budget. I mean, they've got the latest of the latest, the best of the best, two or more of everything. It's obviously way more than just two. So you're pretty much guaranteed that your stuff will never be offline. Another benefit that you guys will have is redundancy. Now, isn't that cool? A third one is cloud. Now that goes about saying, I mean, we've mentioned so many times in this video that this is cloud. And when it comes to cloud, why am I mentioning that? Well, because this is the cloud, you will get benefits like having the ability to join devices from anywhere in the world. Your people don't need to be on premises, which is normally within the office building. Traditionally, they had to be at the office, plugged into an Ethernet cable or connected to the Wi-Fi to be able to join your domain. Now, not so much. Another benefit of the cloud is authenticating from anywhere in the world. Now, once again, people needed to traditionally be within the office to authenticate against your Active Directory within the office. I mean, there's obviously ways around that, I and mean, you can go use a VPN and all that, but that's besides the point. So by default, you had to be within the office. With the cloud, we have something called Azure Active Directory. You can join your devices to an Azure domain. It's worth noting, and it's not part of this course really, that only Windows 10 devices can join an Azure domain. You have to have Windows 10. Anything older than Windows 10 will not work. And within Windows 10, it has to be enterprise or professional. Anything lower, you know, ranking, is not going to cut it. So it has to be professional enterprise, has to be Windows 10. And with Windows 11 being released, obviously Windows 11 is going to support that as well. So, yeah. The last benefit I'm going to mention today, and this is actually not the only benefit, so I'm just going to stop it here for now, is managing access to applications. Now, your applications on the Azure Active Directory is basically objects, which means you can go and manage access to these applications. So since everything is going to be in the cloud, you will have the ability as the administrator to go and choose who has access to what, when they do, how they do, and what requirements, compliance requirements they need to meet before they can actually access these resources. I can, for example, go do something as silly as forcing you to be in a certain geographical location before you can access a certain application. I can force you to use a domain join device before you can access an application. I can force you to use a certain operating system. If you don't use an operating system I want you to use, I can block you from that. So I can force you to use Windows. I can force you to use Windows 10 specifically. I can force you to have a certain build or version of Windows 10. I can make sure you meet certain security requirements like having multi-factor authentication, in other words, MFA for short. If you do not meet these requirements that I desire, I can essentially block you from accessing these resources. You could legit be the right owner of that account and have the username and have the password, but if you don't meet my complexity requirements or my security or compliance requirements, it's a no-go. You're not going to access those resources. All right, guys, I think that pretty much concludes our video for today. Like usual, smash that like button if you felt this has helped you. I hope it has. I mean, I put a lot of effort into this one. And if you're new here, well, what are you waiting for? Click on that subscribe button and click on the notification bell. Otherwise, you will not know when the next video comes out. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video where we're going to be covering Azure Active Directory synchronization. We'll be synchronizing your on-premises active directory with one on the cloud and vice versa. See you guys there.